Hi. <clears throat> Hi. This is Max 7 tutorial number 18. MIDI. Basic effects. Part B. All right. We made the keyboard. We have volume. We can select voices. We can turn tremolo on and off. For dramatic effect. All right. This is going to be slightly more complex just because we don't want to leave things in a bad state. But what we want to work on today is pitch bend so we get sort of full control of our MIDI. So the problem with pitch bend and the problem is that the zero in pitch bend is 64. In other words, on a scale of 1 to 128, 64 is in the middle. So when you bend a note, you bend it up, you bend it down, but 64 is where you want it normally. And leaving something at 64 is a, well, is a challenge. So let's uh, go see what we can do and come up with some wacky idea about how to constantly be resetting something to 64. But we're up for everything. So. Let's unlock our patchers and steal this volume slide over here right away. So just highlight it and its number below it. Option click on it, drag it to the other side over here. And now we're going to call this our pitch bend, um, our pitch bend slider. And here's the number that, that goes along with it. So if we want it to always be going back to 64, one way to do it is to always be averaging it with 64. Uh, let, let's just say, so if whatever number we get here, if we, add, um, okay, so we can go up to 127 and down to zero. If we go to zero and we average it with 64, it'll move slowly back up. If we go to 127 and average it with 64, it'll come slowly back down and end up at 64. So my plan, as goofy as it is, is to unlock my patcher. That's not goofy. That you need to do. And type N. And I'm just going to say uh, that gives you the new object. And now we're going to add 64 to it. Goodness me. Um, so we're going to add 64 to it. And then we're going to type another N. And for those of you unfamiliar with high school math, uh, high school math, grade school math, then we're going to divide by 2. So we've got our slash space 2. Did I get a space in there? Okay, very good. I did. So plus 64 minus, uh, excuse me, divided by 2, and we should end up with um, the average of whatever this is. Add 64 to it and divide by 2, so we'll be um, always averaging out to 64. Um, that sounds like a good plan, and then we'll output that to a message box, which can periodically be banged on to send the number back up to the top of this slider. Does that make sense to everybody? I hope it does, because it's making sense to me and that's almost scary. So let's lock our patchers and just see if it works. So if I go up to 125, then I get a 94 here. And when I send that 94 around here, this will come down and it'll get closer and closer. So I'm just going to bang on this, bang. And then I get a 79, 71, 67, 65, 64, 64, 64, 64. Oh my God, it works. Okay, great. So what if we go down to 6 and try it again? We add it to 64 and divide by 2, we get 35, so we go bang, bang, bang. It's coming up, up to 63. Hmm. 
How do you like that? Maybe 127 divided by 2 is not 64. Um, but I think, uh, oh. <laughs> I'm sure there's some little something we can do here. I bet if we add 64 point something, it'll work perfectly. That's what we'll do. We'll be 64.5. Why not? Okay. Now let's see math run its course. We'll go back down to zero-ish. Not zero, but then average, average, average. 56, 62, 63. Oh, 63. Darn you, 63. I hate you. And what if we go up? It always comes back to 64, so I'm going to say maybe 64.75. This is the kind of math that uh, they don't teach you in school. This is the kind of math you only learn in computer programming, which is the math that gets things done. Okay, back down to the bottom, and averaging back up there. Now we're just going to get to... Oh, my God. Maybe I have a whole wrong look at this. A completely inaccurate idea. Maybe it should just be plus 65. What's really weird is that I did this before and it worked perfectly. And so that's why one should always remember that programming and math actually have nothing to do with each other. Okay, so we pull it down and we say average, 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 64, we get it. All right, hopefully, coming from the top, and 65. Yeah, you could just sort of see that one coming, couldn't you? Um, <laughs> maybe we're really shooting for 63. Am I just out of my mind here? You know what? I say... Just make it 64, and something knows something that we don't know. It's got to always average out to 64. It just has to. If you keep adding 64 to something and dividing by 2, it has to average out to 64. It just has to. It has to. Okay. Enough. All right. So how do we make this do that all the time without getting in our way? Well, what I figure is what we want is something that kind of like we can drag it down and bend it, but then it kind of goes like boing back to here. So what we need is something that tells us when the mouse is pressed down and shuts off the sort of banging state of, well, we're going to use a metro for this. So here we go. Um, we're going to unlock our patcher and type n metro, and then let's just make it run at uh, 200. That's five times a second. That should be fast enough. And that is going to bang on this sometimes. And how to make it bang on it sometimes is the other question. So, then we know that there's an object. I'm going to just move this uh, over a little bit, give us some room. Okay, there's an object called mouse state. So type n and mouse state. But here's the trick with mouse state. In order to output the mouse state, you have to be banging it with a metro. So let's put another metro up here for mouse state. And then a toggle to turn it on. <laughs> That's the cool thing about having your MIDI keyboard hooked up to your computer keys. Whenever you type the right keys, it makes noise. And then just remembering, of course, that we want this to turn on when we uh, to the right place when we um, 
we want this metronome to definitely always be on. So we're going to put a load bang object here. And there it is. Okay. So now when we open our patcher, load bang is going to knock that X on. Boom, boom. There it goes. It turns on. Metronome's running. Mouse state. And now um, I'm unlocking my patcher again. I'm just putting a message here to check and make absolutely sure. Right. So one, as you can see, like I'm moving this around, so I'm holding my mouse down and it says one. And as soon as I let up, it says zero. Perfect. That is exactly what we want, except we want it precisely the other way around. So what we want is when we press this thing down for it to stop. So we have to somehow figure out how to switch zero and one. It's actually kind of simple, but it takes a whole, well, there's two possible ways to do it. One's to use the select object and then bang on messages that say zero and one, um, much like we did over here. Just they would say zero and one instead. Um, but we want to be just absurdly clever today and we're in that kind of crazy mood. So we are going to think about the strange relationship of zero and one. How could you apply mathematics to this and always get a zero if you get a one and a one if you get a zero? What I would do is multiply by negative one and add one. That's my plan. So if it's zero, I multiply by negative one and I get zero, and then I add one and I get one. And if it's one, I multiply by negative one and I get negative one, and then I add one to that and I get zero. So let's do it. What did I say? Right. Multiply by negative one and then add one to it. That's a type of n plus space one. That's it. So we could do with two objects what would normally take us three objects to do. Okay, it's not a great savings, but it's something. So let's see if this whole mess works now. This metronome's running. We can see that every time we click down, it goes zero, zero, one. And now, can we move this thing? Whoops, forgot to lock my patcher. There we go. Locking the patcher, we move it down to 43 and it goes back up to 63, driving us crazy. 63 plus 64 divided by 2 equals 63 and a half. Oh well. Can't be bothered by this. Okay, and then we go up, and it comes back down. Uh, uh, you have to love it, though. I mean, look at that thing. It's, it's just about perfect, and nobody can tell the difference between 63 and 64 on a pitch bend. Darn it. Oh, there are people out there who can? Well, heck. So we've done all this, and we have this thing returning so nicely to 64, mostly. <laughs> 63. Um, every time. We're going to call it good enough. It's just pitch bend for crying out loud. That I think now we can actually hook this to pitch bend. I'm unlocking my patcher and I'm running this, which ultimately yields the number. And I'm going to run that down to. Uh, it's kind of hard to get through there. It's all right. There's where pitch bend goes. So let's see how it works. I'm going to lock my patcher and play some notes. Oop. Let's turn off that tremolo so we don't get confused. Okay.
there we go. Look at that. We've, so we've got our pitch bend working. So that I consider a fantastic accomplishment with only only using 12 objects or so. So, um, you know, I think, well, we can clean this up, of course, um, here as we know how to do it. So we'll just uh, lock our patcher here and select them all. But now I'm going to shift click this one and this number. Nah, I'm not going to shift click this number. This number just irritates me. I'm going to have no number at all. And so I've got that one out of the way. And now I am going to shift command E or just go up to the top and click encapsulate. Sorry, I'll do that again in the and then in here where it says P. Um, you can put a one word title in here and I'm going to call it uh, what is it? Pitch bend. Pitch bend control. No spaces. It confuses the patcher if you put spaces in there. All right. Pitch bend control. So I've got pitch bend control down there. I've got tremolo. I've got voice control. And I've got volume. I can control my keyboard up and down. We are doing great. In the very next tutorial, we're going to figure out how to make um, a patcher and then a B patcher out of this that um, we can use in other patchers. So I'll see you back for that. In the meantime, um, patch on and play lots of good music with lots of uh, tremolo. Whoops. Lock your patcher first. Don't forget to lock your patcher. Um, and, uh, and pitch bend. See ya.